So now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we use at Marcel Media for conversion rate optimization. And this is a nifty little funnel to help kind of illustrate what the you know, different sort of steps within the CRO process are. Uh, we start out with awareness, we work through it, engagement, evaluation, commitment, and then ultimately getting them, getting the customers to convert. So tools are used as really as a, a complementary product to our web analytics that we're already using. So Google Analytics is our preferred metrics for analytics, and, and we're utilizing Google Analytics on a regular basis, as most of you are as well. Analytics can really give us a lot of keen insights into how we should be better uh, you know, delivering the website for conversions. What we like to do, though, is combine a couple of other tools with analytics to sort of continue to build that intel that helps us understand how we should be changing the website in the future. So what we like to look at is three main components. One is form analytics, one is conversion funnels, and then one is heat maps. And I'm gonna talk in a little bit more detail about each one of these. So form analytics are critical because it allows us to really understand a lot more about where people drop off, what behaviors people are engaging in as they're going through our conversion process. So when we talk about form analytics, we're really looking at things like where users exit a page or a website. So where in the process did they drop off or did they decide they wanted to leave? Was it once they already entered a, a shopping cart page and, and had some products in their shopping cart? Was it earlier in the process? Uh, when did that happen? And then we can start to make some assumptions around that. Conversion reports highlight the conversion funnel. So we can actually set up the funnel, whereas if we drive someone into a landing page from a marketing campaign, we know that we then want them to click on whatever link is on that page that takes them to the Buy Now page. From there, we want them to add it to the cart, and from there, we want them to check out. So that's a three-step process, which we can identify within our funnel, and that allows us to really understand how many people went from step one to step two to step three. And it's very interesting to see the drop-offs that we see oftentimes within those form analytics. We can also look at a drop report, which gives us information about what content was last viewed before somebody exited our website. And then the time report. How long did it take to fill out a form? This is important. Most forms have, are, are asking for too much information. Not always, but usually. Um, and what we found is very subtle changes to a form can have a massive impact on the conversion rate of that form. So small things like the name being all on one line instead of first name, last name. Very easy to do. A lot, a lot of people just don't even think about it. They just have last name, first name. But that can slow down the amount of time. And often folks are at their desk, you know, they're on their lunch hour, they're in a hurry, they're doing something very quickly. They don't want to take the time to tab through a lot of different fields within a form. So those types of, in, uh, of you know, different pieces throughout that process can help us understand why it might be taking people too long to fill out a form. And then a blank field report is always important as well. What sections were overlooked? You know, what sections were people maybe not even seeing because of the design piece and how can we fix that? And then a refill report, which allows us to view what fields the user filled incorrectly the first time they went through the process. So if people aren't understanding that, you know, we're asking them to put their mailing address in, they thought that was the email or something like that, we're starting to get some insights into the fact that our form is too long, perhaps, or ineffective. So conversion funnels. This report looks at a, a deeper level into the conversion process, which I had mentioned. This is very interesting to look at if you have a shopping cart or if you have a very specific conversion point that you're trying to drive people to to get them to convert. So what it allows you to do is see the percentage of visitors who started at a certain point and actually ended up converting. And then you can also see the drop-off rates and where those drop-offs occurred. So again, are they putting things into the shopping cart but then abandoning at the last minute because maybe the price was too high or perhaps we didn't show them the shipping price until the very last step of the process, which can oftentimes lead people to leave the site because they weren't expecting uh, those fees to be added on at the last minute, tax, those types of things that are maybe a surprise. 
Um, and then it allows you also to estimate the site traffic over the past 30 days to get a good feel for how many people are getting to this point. Is it enough people? Can I compare that back to my marketing spend and get a sense of the return on investment? Is this marketing campaign effective for me? And then the final tool that we use is heat maps. And a lot of people in the room have probably seen these reports. Um, again, if you're working with Marcel Media, we will bring these up from time to time. We think that they're pretty interesting reports to get into because it shows a little bit more than just what analytics tracks, uh, which is a lot of information as well. But this is a little bit more um, you know, looking at where people's attention goes when they're on the website. And we have a nice way to identify when people are on a page for a long time. Perhaps they're scrolling up and down. Uh, perhaps they're getting a little bit lost. They're not sure exactly where to go. Perhaps they're clicking back and forth. Um, we see this frequently when people go into a category page, for instance, and they're not finding the product they want. They go back to the home page. They click on another category page. They still didn't find what they want. They go back to the home page. And frequently, they could have gotten to additional category pages from that other category page, but they don't realize that. So again, that sort of gives us some insights that maybe the navigation isn't as intuitive as we wanted it to be. We can also track the number of clicks within a page, which helps us understand how those links are performing, if people are actually seeing some of the links that are maybe not as prominent within the page. And we can actually track when people are moving their mouse over areas which unconsciously or subconsciously, I should say, we often do that when we're reading information on a website as we move our mouse around even if we're not clicking. So that helps us to understand where people are focusing. We do have a couple of examples of heat maps. Um, this is very common that we'll see heat maps that sort of look like the, the first one and, and the third one particularly. That's typically where people's eyeballs sort of go is in that red spot, which is that, that left-hand top area, and then over here on the, uh, is this work? Whoops. Not working. Bad idea. Bad idea to try to use the pointer. Oh. Sorry. I was trying to be all fancy and point on something. Do it the old school way. There we go. So what I was going to say is, you know, this, this middle sort of top left se section here and then frequently over here also. And really, you know, we can thank Google for that. Um, thank you, Google. I think a lot of people just sort of get used to with Google, you go, your eye tends to go to that top area and then the right-hand side. So that's typically true with a lot of our websites as well. When we see big, long scrolling pages with content, you know, very at the very bottom of the page. You know, we like to recommend things like, you know, linking to a more specific page, highlighting the information, bullet points, because really you're not seeing a lot of activity typically in that middle and lower part of the page. So heat maps can be very helpful when we're looking at uh, conversion rate optimization. And really, our best case scenario is to utilize all of these tools together combined with analytics to help us understand what the opportunities are for conversion rate optimization. So without the tools, without the right people looking at the data, it's hard to understand how to make changes to the website that are really going to affect and increase those conversions. I think what a lot of people do is they make assumptions and they, again, you know, my favorite color is pink, let's have a pink website, or you know, my CEO loves this product, he thinks it's the best, let's promote it from the home page. What we really want to do is dive more into the analytics, more into these reports to get a feel for why and make a case for why it makes sense to optimize the site based on some of this data. So that being said, we're going to jump into a quick case study and um, talk a little bit about kind of how this played out for a couple of our clients. So one of our clients uh, is a label company. They print labels for small business owners, everything from candle makers to uh, wine distributors and anything else you can think of that puts a label on something and then sells it. Um, so they're called Your Labels Now and we wanted to look at ways to continue to increase their conversion rate. Very sales focused website. Uh, people actually go onto the website.
they submit their designs, they choose their size and their color and their quantity of labels, and they go ahead and purchase them, and they're sent out a couple days later. So very important to look at conversion rate optimization. Um, it's obviously a B2B play, so it's important to understand what their customers are looking for. So the thing that we thought was most important about the website was to have that instant quote on the left hand, or I'm sorry, on the right hand side of the page. So that was a, a you know, sort of easy update, update to the website that we made um, initially to make sure that it was easy for people who came to the site that knew they wanted to purchase something that knew exactly what they were looking for, that we gave them the opportunity to do that. Then what we identified was that people were very interested in seeing samples and understanding kind of how the labels would look. And that was important to a lot of the users. So what we did was we looked at the instant quote form to get an idea of how we could simplify that process, make it easier to get the right resources into the customer's hands, and make it even easier for them to then request a quote. So we used form analytics to measure the performance between a one column versus a two column form. And we tracked the effectiveness and conversions by measuring the amount of form submissions. So, you know, it's not rocket science, really. It's just if we were to adjust this form a bit and make it a little bit more intuitive, a little bit easier to see, a little bit easier to fill out, and give them access to some additional samples and resources, would that impact our conversion rate? And thankfully, the answer was yes. So the result was a 23% increase in conversions. And really, what we did was pretty simple. This is the Get an Instant Quote page. It's a one column, as you can see, uh, originally it was a one column form, and it had a lot of different um, you know, fields that people had to enter into, and there wasn't any color or images or anything sort of interactive on the page. So what we decided to do was to test out a two column form, give it uh, numbers, put numbers next to the steps that people had to go through in order to get that quote, and include some samples and some images on the right hand side. And again, very simple changes, but you can see the difference between, oh, I better not get into this again. Never mind that. Just kidding. Just kidding, I don't want to do that. So you can see the difference between this form, which is the you know more sort of lively form. It's got a lot more information. There, it's got the images, it's got the samples, you can sort of see what those labels look like, and it's a much quicker process to get through. Six easy steps, they're labeled, they're easy to get through, most of them are drop downs, and boom, get an instant quote. So again, the, whoops, is it doing that? You're not supposed to go backwards on these presentations. So this is the one, the one column form, and then the two column form. So we thought that was sort of a, a nice illustration of a simple conversion rate optimization process that we went through with the clients.